Well, that's taco in the throat. <laughs> yeah, that's what she said. <laughs> I know what that bell means. What does that mean? That means Travis Chapel. Here's the steeple. Open it up as he networks with the people. Let's do what tacos do. Choke your throat. Buckle up. It's the Insurance Dudes Podcast. Well, well, well uh, welcome to the show, Travis. Awesome to have you here. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. yeah we, we have a nice audience of, of many, many insurance agents. Sweet. Uh, and for those who don't know you, why don't you tell them a little bit about your background and, and we'll dive in. Yeah. So uh, I am a salesperson myself, just kind of always was. And so I did door to door sales for about six, seven years, um, training, management, recruiting, selling, all that good stuff. So definitely on the hustle, like I'm sure a lot of your audience is. And yep. uh, eventually just got to the point where I was like, I, I, I want to stop chasing business and I want business to come to me. And uh, that's when I ended up starting the show. So there is a brief overview. We can dive in further to any part of that story that you want to, but uh, that is a really brief overview. Yeah. Your audience well, get to let's, go, let's go back to door to door, man. That's yeah. some uh, tough sales right there. Yeah, it's uh, definitely, you definitely cut your teeth for sure, man. Like, uh, and not just in selling, but in all forms of communication, you know, just yeah. emotional intelligence and reading body language and social cues. And I mean, you just talked, uh, there, there's no better training for all of that than talking to people. You know, you can read as many books as you want to, but once you go out and talk to, you know, 20, 30, 40 people every day for five, six years, people you've never met before, you can't really help, but really figure out how to communicate properly and what works, what doesn't work. Yep. And what, what were you selling? selling? Oh, look at that jinx. <laughs> Um, I was started in solar, started in the solar industry, um, and then sold alarms and then ended in water purification. Wow. Nice. Three different gigs door to door. Oh, wow. the whole gamut. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. That's incredible. So yeah, I was just back then it was just all about, Hey, what makes me more money? And then that's where I would go. So, um, yeah when I actually transitioned to podcasting full time, it was the first time in my life that I'd ever taken a pay cut to do something different, but I just loved it so much more than anything I was doing that I just didn't really care. You know, now it obviously does much better than anything I've done in the past. But, um, when I first made the transition, it was, it was a pay cut at first. And it was the first time in my life I'd ever done that. Every, every time I changed to do something differently, it was always like, Oh, there's just more money over here. So why not go do this? Cause I never really loved anything that I did. Mm -hmm. you know? Mm, I think a lot of people can relate to that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, I, I would definitely think so. <laughs> um, so talk about like, when did you start the podcast? Uh, August of 2017. So not, not too long ago. Not too long ago. And what was your schedule like and how did you ramp it up? Yeah. So we uh, immediately from the beginning, we did three, three shows a week. So we have not come off of three shows a week, which is why, you know, we're two years old, but I think we're our episode like 342 or something like that now. Wow. Yeah. Um, so just cranking through content. And honestly, I, I would like to, I would like to seem like I was, you know, just being a noble content creator when I did that. But it was, <laughs> it was honestly just because um, the guy who I was looking at as the ultimate example of a business podcaster was a guy named John Lee Dumas. Huh. And at the time he was doing seven days a week and had done so for over four, four and a half years or something like that. So I was just like, man, if that dude can do seven days a week, I could probably do five days a week. And then my coach was like, maybe you should start with three and see how that feels. And so, <laughs> I, was, I, so I did three and I was like, Hey, good call coach. Like yeah, five a week is insane. Seven a week is absolutely mind numbing. So, um, <laughs> but three a week is, has proven to be a pretty solid uh, schedule for us. And so for people that don't know your podcast, um, what is it called? Yeah. So the show is called Build Your Network. Build Your Network. It's all about uh, connection, teaching people how to grow an effective network the right way and to stop using the 
antiquated, outdated methods of the 1980s and get on board with these new forms of relationship building that actually provide real relationships with real people instead of just contact information and a bunch of people just trying to get sales out of each other. I love it. And the irony of that is you're building your network while you're doing the podcast called Build exactly. Your Network. Exactly. 100%. <laughs> yeah, totally, man. That was the goal from the beginning. It was, it was twofold for sure. Like I knew that I needed to expand my network and uh, I knew that I didn't really know how to do it. So I was just like, why don't we just create a show where I learn how to do it and then just teach people what I learn in the process. Isn't that crazy? Like awesome. how many... Th- they always say the best way to learn anything is to teach. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A hundred percent teach and then get around the people who do it the best, you know? So that yep. was always my goal is just bring the best possible guests that I can and people that have incredible networks and just ask them like, Hey, how did you build that network? <laughs> like how did, yeah. how did you, how did you get to rub shoulders with that person? And you start finding these, you know, patterns and common denominators between all these successful people and then implement it get similar results and then share those results with the audience. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to deny that what I teach works when you can just look at where I was and then look at where I am. You know what I mean? Like it's impossible to deny when you look two years ago when I was starting from scratch, zero connections. Like I'd never even, like I never even met a millionaire prior to two years ago, let alone had a relationship (laughs) with one, you know what I mean? Like a friendship. So now having interviewed like I think close to $15 billion in net worth now on my show, like with starting, like when I started the most successful person I knew made about $150,000 a year. So like going from that to this in two years, like there's, I'm doing something right. You know what I mean? Like yeah. there's some, there's something that I'm, that I'm up to that, that obviously not everybody's figured out, or maybe they just haven't cared to figure it out um, or haven't spent the, the amount of time that I have trying to figure it out, whatever it is, you know what I mean? That's the, the proof is in the pudding. Well, and you remain yep. consistent, you know, doing it, even though it was probably struggling at the, or a struggle at the beginning. Oh yeah. Right? For a while. Broke through. Yeah. I mean, we can relate. It yeah. was, what was that? People on, yeah. Yeah, sorry, go that, ahead. What was that building point? So, so you start this, you know, obviously it's tough shoes to follow. John, John Lee Dumas, I mean, amazing, right? Uh, you see it now, huge mm-hmm. podcast. But so you're, you're starting out, you're like doing three week, getting a few listeners here and there. What was that journey like to that turning point? And then what was that turning point? You know, it's interesting. I was having this conversation with another all-star podcaster, Jordan Harbinger. I don't know if you guys know him. Um, He now, yeah, he's, he's been podcasting about 12 years. So he was one of the first 500 shows in iTunes. Um, Wow. Well, here's a, here's a great way to say it. He was podcasting before the first iPhone came out. That helps put it into context. Yeah. That is something. So he currently gets about 6 million downloads a month and has had people like Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant and, you know, CEO of Google and, you know, people like that on his show. So he's at the very top of the game at this point. And I was asking him some of these questions just for my own knowledge. It's like, Hey man, was there ever a point in your show where you just saw like, 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 just this point where everything just took off where you were putting in all this work for a certain period of time. And then within six months, it would just like explode. And he was like, Nope, Nope. Didn't exist. (laughs) Like not once. It's always been a slow, steady grind, a slow build, just one more, you know, like a little bit of a peak in downloads. And then it goes back down and levels off, but that level off is a little bit higher than the last level yeah. one was. And then you get a little bit, another peak from a boost. Maybe it's a big guest or a share or, um, or, or something like that. Right. So then you get another little boost, right. And then it levels off, but that, that little off is a little bit higher than the last level off. So it's just about doing that over and over and over and over again and not getting burnt out to the point where you just quit. Um, because the, the people, the, the way to the, the way to build an audience in, in content creation is only through consistency. Um, mm. Consistency and, and mixed with quality is the only way to build an audience um, in any sort of platform that you have. If you can't be consistent and you don't bring quality, then you can't expect that people are going to stick around. Like you, you got to be painfully consistent. 
um, when, even when nobody's listening. And, and that's really when it's tough, man. Like month nine, month 10 for me after doing like three epi- three interviews a week, not just three episodes. Now it's three episodes, not three interviews. When I started, it was three interviews. So like that's a lot of content to keep up with, especially mm-hmm. when, when, when you release it, all, it's like crickets. Like not, you, you don't see giant download numbers. You're not hearing people engaging. You're not seeing shares. You're not seeing like, it just seems like nobody's paying attention to something that I, you know, poured my heart, my energy, my soul into my bank account into it. Just, it was just like, man, what am I doing this for? You know? Um, but uh, I just knew at that point, like, Hey, you know what? It's not about the download numbers right now. So I just stopped looking at them and uh, kept focusing on the people who did listen and the people who were engaging And, uh, then it just kind of has been a slow build since then. I've just gotten better at learning how to take advantage of what I do have rather than focusing on the numbers that I don't have and letting that discouraging me, letting that discourage me from keeping on creating content for the people that are listening. That's awesome. It obviously goes back to your days grinding it out door to door. I mean, it's the same kind of concept, right? You got to hear 99 no's before you get the one big yes or. Yeah. And and, and realize that it only gets easier, right? So like maybe the first time I went knocking, it was 99 no's and one yes. But when I stopped, it was like nine no's and one yes. Right. So it's kind of the same thing with podcasting is like, if you can just grind through those stages that most people won't make it through, like it just, to me, it just makes logical sense. Like if you're willing to do the things that people aren't willing to do, then you can have the results that people aren't willing to, are, aren't going to be able to get. Right. That's it. Like it's very, very simple. So I know that most people aren't willing to push through those like no numbers days to get to like be, to get to attract those big numbers. So if that's all I got to do to get to that point, then like down, I'm willing, you know what I mean? It just comes down to clarity on what your goals are because maybe you're listening to this right now and you have a podcast and it sucks and you're not having any downloads or listens and you feel like you're spinning your wheels. And then you just got to ask yourself, is this important to me? Because if it's not, then stop. Like the pain isn't worth it. Right. The end result isn't like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if, is it's, if it's not a big goal for you, for me, it was. And I knew that from the beginning. So there wasn't another option. The only other option was quit. And I didn't like that option because I knew <laughs> I wanted to make it happen. Right. So yeah. like I didn't have an option at that point. The only other option was to push forward and get through all the no's and get through those like down times and push past to the point where it is now. Um, yep. you just got to kind of have faith and trust that something good is on the other side and know that the worst case scenario is like worst case scenario. I spend a lot of my time learning and getting to know people and building a network. And even if I lose money at the end of the day, this was still a good profitable use of my time. Cause what else would I be doing with it? You know what I mean? Yep. Have you been working, um, on the side too? Not now. No. Um, when I started the show, I was, yeah, I was still, um, I was selling door to door. I was running a team of like five or six door to door reps for like a, I basically had a sub dealership for a water purification machine. And I trained a team of like four or five guys and, and we'd go knocking, um, back when I started the, the show. So, um, when I went full time, I stopped, I stopped the, uh, door to door and just been doing this full time now. And how long has that been? A little bit over a year. Actually, yeah. So September of last year, I went full-time. So now it's been 13 months full-time made podcasting. That's so cool, man. It's it, it's so crazy. It's definitely that journey. Um, I think a lot of people look at anything that was social media. It's so glamorized now, right? Whether it's podcasting or your YouTube channel or what whatever it is. And people want to go from A to Z on that stuff. And it's more crowded now than ever. Hmm. And it's like, dude, it's just like any other job that you started or any other anything that you get into there's a lot of noise out there it, mm-hmm. the people that are going to be successful are the people that are going to be consistent and same with sales for selling insurance or selling anything yeah totally and people underestimate what it takes to be good at something right. it's like that that is to me is a really big one you know like when when i was frustrated at eight nine months maybe i just wasn't good enough maybe that's why people were listening to me you know what i mean like eight nine months three episodes a week is a long time in my head. But if you look at the grand scheme of things, it's really not like, yeah, it's not that much. 
if you've, if you're starting from scratch, you don't have any like radio broadcasting experience. Like you've never talked into a microphone a bunch. Like you're not a pod, you're not a podcaster. You didn't have a previous show. Like you're starting from scratch in terms of like your, your audience and your connections, but also in your skill set. So stop underestimating what it takes to get good at something. And if you're, you know, you're, you're insurance sales and you're two, three years in know that there's some people who've been in this industry for 30 and 40 years who are really good at this and maybe you just need to be better. You know what I mean? Like people just, people really underestimate the amount of time that it takes to get really good at something. And if you're really good at something, then you're going to attract people into your, into your circle, into your sphere that, um, that want to know more about you just because you're really good at something. So don't get discouraged because you're two years in and you aren't at the top of the game. Like it takes a long, like it takes time. And, and the problem is people look at the overnight, the quote unquote overnight success stories. And there are some that exist, but they're not, they're, they're the exception to the rule. They're not mm. the rule. And people always compare themselves to the exception to the rule and not the actual rule itself. And that's what gets people all discouraged. Like, oh, well, this person had these crazy astronomical results in two years. I've been doing this for eight years. How come I haven't seen those results? And it's like, we're well, comparing yourself to the exception to the rule, man. Like, Maybe they had a, maybe they had a crazy big advantage that you didn't have, or maybe they just hit, you know, they got really lucky and got, got really great timing in the marketplace or something like that. Like stuff like that does happen. It does. It's not like it doesn't happen, but you can't bank on that for success. The only way you can bank on success is playing it the, the, the right way and, uh, and planning for the long term. Like if you keep bang, if you keep planning out that you're going to get successful on these, like you know, get rich quick, lucky opportunities. Like that's your plan. That's not a super, super bulletproof plan. You're probably going to be disappointed more often than not. So like just do it the tried and tested way and put the time and work and effort into it. And you will see results just maybe a little bit later than some other people that you're comparing yourself to. And I think the key there is to take action, like take action, keep grinding it out and eventually you will be good. Kobe Bryant wasn't Kobe Bryant the first shot. That's for right. sure. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. You got to take action towards your goals, man, for sure. Like things just, things just work out that way. You know, like if people, people, uh, they're, they're the studiers, you know what I mean? Like they, every, they have to study everything and they had to read 38 books on something before they take a step in the right <laughs> yeah. direction. And it's like, no, 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 just do it. Just get started, go move toward the goal. And like things will start, you'll, you'll start attracting more things into your life that'll help you continue along that journey, but you just got to get started. How important yeah. was it for you along your journey to create those goals and really focus on them? The, uh, the goals for the show you're saying? Just, yeah. A- anything yeah. along that journey, the goals for the show, the, the, the listeners, the amount of time you're putting in. Yeah. It's uh, r- really important. I think getting clarity on your goals is one of the most underrated activities that you can do. Um, because, because you change, right? People change. So if you make a goal, you know, like if I made a goal when I started my show, of let's say, you know, a million downloads or something total. And I was starting my show. That means I had no idea what it would take to get to that. I'm just throwing out a number and like hoping that I'm going to achieve it. Right. So if I don't like take times in between like then and now to sit down and be like, okay, am I on track to hit that goal? Is that a realistic goal? Is that a good goal? Based on what I've seen now, what should I make adjustments along the way? And don't use this as an excuse to cop out of your goals that might be a little bit, you know, higher than what you think you can achieve. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying you have to take the time to gain clarity and look ahead and figure out if you're going to hit the right, the right place. You know what I mean? That's, that's like, that, like if you, if you don't get clarity, your clarity on your goals, it's like, you know, just getting in a boat and heading somewhere and hoping yeah. that you're going to end up in England. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> right. you're just like, if you're like, if you some leave, direction. yeah, like if you leave New York and you don't have clarity on where you're headed and then you end up in Zimbabwe and you're like, dang, I, I should be in London right now. It's like, well, <laughs> yeah. you set yourself up to get to London. Cause you didn't really know that that was what you wanted to begin with. If you know you're going to London, then you can set your bearings to be headed in the direction of London. And the, will there be winds and things along the way that are going to push you off track? Sure. But you just adjust and then keep heading toward the goal. 
You know what I mean? And then along the way, if you're like, hey, you know what? London doesn't seem like the place I want to go. I do want to go to Zimbabwe. Then then you can adjust course and head that direction. Because the last thing you want to do is end up in London and be like, damn, I didn't want this. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't want to be here. I really didn't want to be here that bad. It was, I only had this goal because of culture or society or familial pressures or, you know, all these other things. Like the, the worst thing is to, is to achieve a goal that you don't even want to achieve to begin with. So I think gaining that clarity and understanding where you want to end up and then taking action to actually go toward that direction um, is, you know, super simple to think about, but it's one of the most complicated things that we do because, you know, we change all the time. We're human. We, we don't really know what we want half the time. So we, we really got to mm. like make that a part of our weekly or monthly um, practices. I try to once a week sit down and just like make sure I'm, I still want the things that I say that I want. Um, and again, as long as you're not using it as an excuse to be like, Oh, I don't want that anymore. But you know, you really do, but it just right. seems like a lot of work. You know what I mean? Like you can't right. use it as an excuse to cop out of the goals that you really <laughs> want to achieve in life. Um, but sometimes maybe you do set a goal that you, that you revisit six months down the road and you're like, that's, that was actually more my dad's goal for my life, not my goal for my life. Mm. Maybe I want to adjust and do something different. Um, because you don't want to put in the type of work and the sacrifice necessary to reach those goals and then get there and be like, shit wrong one <laughs> you know yeah yeah it's true and i i think um i think for dads like i've talked to a lot of i'm a dad i've talked to a lot of dads where it's like you know you're working on this stuff you're trying to achieve these goals right and then all of a sudden you realize your goals were aligned for your family and all the stuff but now all of a sudden that's not where the ship is headed mm-hmm. and now you have this division with your family and all this other stuff. And yeah, you got to align those goals. It's, it's crazy that people don't take me included, take enough time mapping out the way that looks and making sure that you're headed in that direction. And what's crazy to me too, is not just that they don't take the time to do it, but they get frustrated with the results. Right. You know, like, like it's, it's like, bro, how, how, how do you expect to be happy and fulfilled if you're like chasing the things that you don't even want in life? Right. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're, you're getting to the end of being like, man, I checked all the boxes. I did all the things. I, I went to school. I got the grades. I got the degree. I got, you know, I did all the things right. And I checked off the boxes and I've gotten to the place where I'm supposed to be. And now I'm not happy. I'm upset about that. And it's like, well, right. Yeah. You're not happy because this wasn't whatever what you wanted. <laughs> like you're yeah. only doing this because you felt like it's what you should have done because you never took the time to figure out what your goals were, what would make you happy, like what you would regret not doing by the time you're 90 years old you never figured those things out so you're just chasing things that other people told you are good and it leaves this like void inside of you because you realize that you didn't do the things that you actually wanted to do with your life it's yeah, so, all that noise well society noise. tells us all these steps yep. we need to take you need to get the job you need to do this and and you get you get sucked into the process mm-hmm. and not the outcome mm-hmm. right and what we need to do is look at what is our outcome what is going to make us happy you know, we, we do insurance, right. For a company we won't mention, but I look to this day, Wednesday is when we, when we record and, mm-hmm. and it's the highlight of the week. Like this is the most fun. I mean, the owning the business and running, you know, pulling the strings and doing all those things also great, but insurance, not the most exciting subject, right? Mm-hmm. So this is something that we look forward to and we're, we have an outcome here yeah. right now. It's, you know, obviously this is the grind. And there's nothing coming out of it besides creating content and connections, meeting really connections, cool people for sure. Like yeah. you and you know, I mean, just we've 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 been pretty fortunate in in some of the people that we've landed just because of the one before. Mm-hmm. Right now, it's like, oh, we we met with this person. Can we meet with you? Yes. Oh, wow. Now we met with this person. Can we meet with you? So it's these baby steps are taking us towards this outcome of it creating something. Right. Right. Yeah. I mean, I tell so many people that, man, like if, even if you're not starting a podcast with the intention of becoming a full-time podcaster, like I did, you should still have one because yeah. like use it as leverage worst case scenario. It's just the perfect vehicle. It's the perfect excuse to reach out to people who probably you usually would never give you the time of day, but now they'll take 45 minutes or an hour to connect with you and they give you a bunch of free advice and you can share that with other people <laughs> like boost your it's own. Amazing. Company. So especially I tell, I tell people like real estate agents, lenders, insurance agents all the time. Like 
you have to have your own show because when you're in an industry that's as saturated as any of those three, you have to have a differentiation factor or else you're going to be always, you're going to be battling for scraps your whole career. You're going to be right at that 60 to $70,000 mark every single year. And you're going to be busting your ass to get that sixty or $70,000, begging people to do business with you, chasing, chasing referrals that people don't want to give you, handing out business cards at all the cocktail mixers, <laughs> and that grind will never stop. Or you can start creating content, build a show, and differentiate yourself from the rest of the marketplace by adding value to your ideal customers um, and watch the leads start coming into your business. Again, this is not a short-term thing. You're not going to start a podcast and in three months have immediate results. But if you're going to be doing this for a long time and you want to get into like do it, like creating content and stuff, a couple years down the road, you will be thanking me. Trust me on that. And especially heading into the next recession, because like regardless of when you think it's going to happen, it's going to happen. There's going to be a correction in the market soon enough. We've been on this increase of the market for yeah. 13 years now or some shit. Right. Like it's going to go down here pretty quick. And I don't know when this year, next year, the year after, I don't know, but it's going to happen. And usually uh, industries that have um, a low barrier to entry and high rewards plan like insurance or real estate or lenders, you see a large drop off rate in the agency um, in the agents in those industries during recessions because, because they don't have their business anymore. Their income goes yep. from 65, 70,000 down to 25, 35,000 and they can't make that happen and they go get a job and wait for the next uptick in the economy. And then they go back into that, that job and then chase the 60, $70,000 again. Like, Yep. If you don't want to be like that, you need to have a reason for people to come to you. And the only way to really future proof and recession proof your business is by building true fans of your show and your stuff. And yep. those people are going to keep the bills paid even in the worst of times. And there's that yep. stacking effect. Like you, you spoke to at the beginning, right? We, we have, we have visibility to our clients because of this. They look us up, they Google our name, boom, it mm -hmm. comes up. We have other agents in other states, their clients move to Arizona or to California. And, oh, I'm gonna to refer to Craig because he's in Arizona. Or I'm gonna to refer to Jason because he's in Huntington Beach in California. Right. And then we have coaching businesses and people, well, yeah. you're an expert, you're on yeah. the podcast. Yep, why so wouldn't it, they? Right. It's They're remarkable. looking at two businesses and one of them has you guys leading this like podcast up in the front. And one of them, like you can barely find on the first page of Google, right. which one are they gonna hmm. go with? It's all day just, long it's just obvious you know it just makes sense yeah so what is what are uh, doing this now for two years what are some of the things that you've learned that you didn't think you were going to that were the most valuable things you've learned from others oh man that list is a long one <laughs> <laughs> um, any, any kind of standouts that have made a big impact in you personally or maybe your network maybe your friends or your family or yeah, I would say the biggest one for me is kind of what I was just talking about. Um, actually, exactly what I was just talking about in terms of building like super fans of, of what you have going on. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm always... I'm always, uh, I'm a cautious thinker. And when, during the last recession, I was like 14, 15. So I think me and a lot of people my age and maybe a little bit older, a little bit younger are uh, underestimating the swings in the economy and how difficult it is to generate income um, uh, when there's a recession. And so I've been big into studying how to like recession proof my business because I don't want to, you know, I, I, I want to learn from history. I don't want to repeat history personally. Yeah. So uh, one of the things that I think is really important is building that tribe of super fans, the people that are going to help you do that. And I think if, like, again, especially if you're in real estate, insurance, uh, mortgages, any of these like solopreneur type, um, um, they're not really jobs. So the preneur type small businesses, I really, I guess the best way you could say it um, is, is you have to future proof your business. You have to recession proof your business. And I just think the best way to do that is through creating content and focusing on building a fan, a, a tribe of people that are willing to invest in whatever that you, in whatever you put out because, uh, because they've seen results from everything that you've done in the past and why wouldn't they continue to support you? Um, I, my buddy, uh, Pat Flynn wrote a book on this called super fans. Um, and, uh, he's a great example of it. The dude has a, 
a, a very large loyal audience and he's been blogging and podcasting for, you know, since like 2010, I, th I think. Um, and then, um, and then he's a YouTuber now, so except like his, his channel, he started just like a couple years ago. It's got over 200,000 subscribers now. Um, so every part of it, he's good. He's multiple best selling, multiple time best selling author. Um, and then he just built this company uh, called the switch switch pod. It's like a, it's a tripod for vloggers basically is what it is. And it just, oh, I, it, yeah, I've seen that. Yeah. It's just a little niche thing that like it, it it's a, uh, you know, replaces the gorilla pod, which is the bulky tripod yes. that you like form fit around a tree or whatever that nobody ever really uses it for that. So he was at a conference. He saw people walking around and using it like a handle to hold their DSLR on the top or whatever. And he was like, there's gotta be a better way to do that because that's super bulky and like weird and heavy. Right. So he yeah. created the switch pod and uh, him and a buddy basically invented it, came up with a couple prototypes and um, they launched it on Kickstarter. They needed $100,000 to take it to manufacturing because it was costing them like $1,500 to make one of them, which obviously is not sellable. <laughs> so they had to right. go to the manufacturing and make, had them, have them make the mold to where they could sell the product for 100, 150 bucks and still be profitable on it. Um, so in order to do that, they had to raise about $100,000. So they put the project on Kickstarter. Within 12 hours, they were fully funded, $100,000. Within 60 wow. days, which was their time frame, they raised about four hundred and fifty thousand um, dollars in pre-orders to take this product to manufacturing, and now Holy it's shipping boy. all across the world. Um, and uh, that'll be a, that, that'll probably be a eight-figure business in the next year, year and a half uh, that he built off the back of his super fans, people that just trusted. I, I asked him, I was like, "Hey, bro, how many people do you think bought that because you're you and they wanted to support?" He was like, "I." He's like, I had, I had people reach out and tell me that people that ordered like 20 of them just to support Pat they don't have, wow. they don't even own a video camera, but they ordered like $2,000 worth of product from him just because they fully believe in anything that the guy does. Like that's the power of building a super fan base. Like the majority of people would have to put that on Kickstarter, market the hell out of it and maybe barely reach their hundred thousand dollar goal or not hit it at all and have to self fund the project and then try to sell out of it at that point. Right? Like, he already had a group of people that were totally supportive of whatever he did. So whatever he created, as long as it's, as long as it's a product or a service that really fulfills a need or a problem, right? It can't be crappy, obviously. Um, but if it's good, it doesn't have to be the next Facebook. If you have, right. if you have the engine that sells it of people that trust you to build something quality and you build something quality and give it to them, they're going to buy it. You know what I mean? Like it, it may not, it may not be a unicorn, but it, It'll, it could, like I said, be an eight figure company, like if, you know, the drop of a hat, just because you've taken the time, like he's taken the last decade to add value and change the lives of thousands of people. So like That's they're awesome. more than willing to trade a couple grand to support his new project and like market it for free for him because they just hope he does well because he's such a good dude. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that, that's really, that's really what I'm about, man, is like just trying to help like really embodying that Zig Ziglar quote as much as I possibly can, which is if you help enough people in the world, get what they want, you can have everything that you want. Um, a hundred percent. And just trying to really focus on the out, like focus on the other people and not focus on what I want and just trust that it's going to come back. Cause that's the only way, if you do it with the attachment that hoping something's going to come back to you, then that's just a way to get frustrated and disappointed with people. Um, but doing it in a way that says, like, you know what, I'm just, gonna, I, I, I trust that the universe is going to bring this back to me. I'm just going to do as much good as I can and serve as many people as I can. Um, and in the best way that I know how and hope it comes back. And I think that it, I think that it always will just personally. I love it. And, and it goes to, um, it doesn't matter what platform we're talking, been talking about podcasts. It could be YouTube. It can be anything. Mm -hmm. It's just, but it takes that first step of one person that listens or one person and then you just got to have that faith and keep going. And then it's two and then it's three. And then you see yep. everybody sees the results later, but I mean, it takes, it takes time and it's a grind. You on the other hand, I mean, people look at it now and it's like, Oh wow. It's only been two years only, but <laughs> there's a lot of faith and a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah. For a only, while. only two years and like $200,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's it. That's all it takes. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. No, it, that, and then that kind of goes into the same thing, you know, like just being willing to do the things that other people aren't willing to do. You know, mm -hmm. like, like I just, 
joined a mastermind group that was a hundred thousand dollars for 2020. Um, they, they, they have like 10 spots left guys. So get on that. Nice. Um, but, do you want to, do you want to mention? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a uh, um, buddy, Joel Marion. And then another guy, Dan Fleischman. Dan is probably the most connected guy I've ever met in my life. Um, he's just got insane connections and knows so many people. It's crazy. Um, and then Joel is one of the top affiliate marketers in the world. He's got a 20 million person email list. Um, wow. Owns a nine figure supplement company and he is 37, I believe. Um, wow. Got started in business about 12 years ago. So in 12 years, he's generated like $700 million in sales and uh, is like earned the title king of email marketing. Um, so it's, every instructor in the group, there's 24 paid instructors in the group. They're all, it's called the hundred million mastermind experience because all of the instructors are nine figures plus. And oh, then, um, awesome. the, and then to be in the group, the, the, the members themselves has to be like a minimum seven to eight figure business. So like putting yourself in a, in a group of people like that is just, it, it's just, in a, it's just, it's like, it's like Mario eating a mushroom. You know what I mean? It's just, a, like, it's just like an instant up, like level up. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. just like grow so much faster by joining something like that. But that's something that not a lot of people would be willing to do like a hundred thousand right. dollars to join this group. Are you crazy? Like, you know how many things you can get for that? You know how much, you know, you could have invested that or you could have bought your dream car or you could have done these other things. And like, yeah, totally. I could have, but I just believe in the power of investing into myself and into my knowledge base. And I think that the, the things that people can't take away from me are my knowledge and my connections. I can lose my business. It. I can lose my house. I can lose my cars. I lose everything, but I, I'll never lose my knowledge and I'll never lose my relationships as long as I treat them properly, which I know that I will. So um, if you I can are the invest into those asset. things, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, you know? Yep. So um, that's, that's ultimately what makes me do those things. But like I said, a lot of people aren't willing to do those things, but that's what I think separates the people, you know, who are from the people who are not because those people will always see more success than the people who aren't willing to take the risk on, uh, on, on those, you know, potential opportunities. Love it. So so awesome. We always ask everybody at the end, what's the one piece of advice that you would give someone yeah. The, the biggest thing I always tell people is I always go back to this um, Steve Martin quote that I put on the top of my whiteboard from the very beginning of my show, which is be so good. They can't ignore you. And I, I'm just a big fan of things that make sense. And that just made sense to me. The first time I read it, I was just like, it seems so blatantly obvious, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's like just so profound because if you look at it from his perspective, you know, like Steve Martin became a famous comedian in a time when it wasn't easy, meaning like yeah. there was no YouTube, there was no Instagram. You couldn't just do skits with your buddies and post it online and then all of a sudden be, be discovered and go viral, right? He had to go mm. through this like strict set of guidelines to potentially like, hopefully one day I can perform on Johnny Carson and then, you know, then I'll, I'll get some, I'll book some gigs and I'll go do some stand up comedy. Like there was no option for him. The only thing that he went back to was like, you know what, if I just get so good at this, then there's going to be a point where people just can't help but give me opportunities and work and jobs and, and pay me for things. Like there's just no way that that can't happen because if I'm that good, they have to bring me on. Like no. there's no other yeah. option. And so that was, and sorry, I think you can hear my dogs barking in the back. It's all good. Um, That's like <laughs> uh, but, uh, but so that was the big thing for me when I started was like, yes, podcasting saturated. Yes. You know, like there's 500,000 other shows out there. Yes. There's a half a billion YouTube channels. There's a lot of content creators. There's a lot of coaches and consultants, but if I can just get really good at it, if I can create the best quality show that I can put together, if I can get the best guests possible to come on my show and say, yes, then people can't ignore what I'm doing at that point. Like they did, they just can't ignore it. They can try, but they can't you know, and, uh, and I've seen that happen time, time again, I have a couple of people that like, before I started the show were, um, ex business relationships, uh, that ended poorly and that they just ignored me for a long time. Like I like, like literally ignored me. Like I would text them and they would never text me back. And I was trying to repair <laughs> relationships and stuff. And even though it wasn't in, obviously in my eyes, it wasn't my fault that those relationships were in disrepair, but I wanted to like, you know, reconcile and they wouldn't want to. 
And then like in the last like six, seven months, all of a sudden people have been reaching out out of nowhere. And it's just like, because the, the, to a certain point, they can't like the first person you get on, that's a big name. They're like, Oh, that's luck. You know, right. The, right. The, tw- the 26th no person that you get on, <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah, exactly. Like number 25, <laughs> number 26, number 27. It's like, okay, I can't ignore this guy anymore. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's the biggest piece of advice that I give to anybody listening is just get that good at something like, I love it. People will not be able to ignore you. And Steve Martin, he grinded it out in clubs and sucked. He wasn't funny. Like he literally tried to reverse engineer that. Um, I, how many times did he get on stage? Like, I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah. Even to this day, I was listening to, um, I was listening to Conan O'Brien and David Letterman on, Mm -hmm. uh, on Conan's podcast. And they were talking about Steve Martin and Martin shorts new special that they're touring with. And they did a, I think they did one on Netflix too. And they were talking about how, like how anal Steve Martin is still to this day, even being the giant smashing success that he is still to this day, he is, super super um anal about everything that happens in their show like did this happen on time did they come out at the right time did we step here did we step there like oh you didn't say that right you didn't say this right and he's like on every single part of his act on every single part of his show because he's still pursuing that that air of excellence even though he's already built a career that is you know one of the unrivaled comedy careers of all time you know so like he's still that focused on just perfecting his craft and that's what separates people like that from all the all the other wannabes you know and everybody would think that it's so effortless he gets up there oh, right. he's just, he's yeah just, he's just blessed he's just gifted it's yeah, he's just gifted yeah <laughs> exactly yep love it oh, man. Travis, so great man thank you so much for coming on uh so many knowledge uh nuggets there but we, yeah, we really course. appreciate it I appreciate you guys, Craig, Jason. Thanks so much for having me on. I know that um, I know that you guys are are out crushing it, and uh, congrats on all the success you've that, that you've had so far. Um, let me know if there's anything I can do to to help out. Thanks a lot, man. Same with us, and man. How can they? Where can they find you on your podcast? Yes. Yeah, build your network. If you're listening to this right now, you probably are a podcast listener. So head over and uh, and look up build your network. There's 340 plus episodes to to dive into cool. so um go check out go check out some of that stuff if you are an insurance agent and you're interested in podcast coaching i'm a full-time podcast coach and consultant so um, awesome. I, like i said i try to encourage as many of the solopreneurs like the the lenders the real estate agents insurance agents like get into this space and i, I promise you're going to see some results from it so if anybody's interested in that you can go to travischapel.com slash coaching to apply perfect thank you my man Awesome. Thanks so much. Really appreciate it. We'll put that in the show notes and and, uh, we will chat soon. Cool. Thanks a lot, guys. 55% of insurance sales producers say that they have had little or no sales at training. Us agents focus on marketing to drive activity and often overlook the sales presentation. Improvements in mindset, shifting focus, rapport, needs diagnosis, value building, creating buy-in and overcoming objections lead to drastically better closing numbers. The solution? Enroll your team in September Sales Summit offered by Agency Vault. We will even assess your team to see which of their sales steps need the most improvement. Head to agencyvault.com to sign up before it's full. Hey, thanks for checking out the insurance dudes. Hey, please subscribe. We got some really great stuff coming out.